Welcome friends to another r slash entitled parents video. If you're not entitled, prove it by hitting the like and subscribe button down below. And our first story of the day is by no safety 8877 Mom freaks at swim class. I just saw a post that reminded me of this. My daughter's 9 months and we recently signed up for swim classes. At her age, it's basically getting them acclimated to the water so they aren't scared and slowly getting them to the point where they can eventually float on their back. They do require masks for the parents. It's on the doors, it's in pamphlets, and they make you watch a session before signing up so it's not hidden. Well, we're getting ready, and this mom comes in for her kid's first lesson. He's about 15 months. She's unmasked, so the person at the front tells her she needs a mask, but if she doesn't have any, they have extra. The mom just strolls on by, tells her she's vaccinated, and keeps it moving. The girl was in high school, and you could tell she didn't know what to do. The head person there though is a bit older and it seemed like she was no nonsense, but she's awesome so I never could confirm it until that moment. She goes up to the lady and nicely tells her that she does need a mask. It's required even if you're vaccinated. The lady doesn't like that and says, now that's ridiculous. She didn't know and that she wasn't going to do it. The manager just tells her that's fine, she can fill out her cancellation, and since she never did a lesson, they'll refund her. The mom goes ballistic. It was about 20 minutes of absolute craziness. Every cuss word imaginable, which really pissed off one other mom who had an 11 month old and a 3 year old with her. She then got into it with the mom about cussing and it was a fiasco. The Karen yelling at the manager about being a sheep, telling the other mom to stay out of it or else. The manager was just staring, I'm sure in disbelief at what's happening. The other mom yelling at the Karen about cussing while using every single word variant imaginable, flippin', mother trucker, stuff like that. I did learn that even though my daughter is 9 months, she thinks craziness is amusing when not involved because she was just staring and even giggled at one point when the Karen made a sheep noise. After 20 minutes of absurdity, the police show up. The high schooler had called them. It wasn't hard to figure out what was going on, but the funniest thing was the Karen turned and said, Oh my god, thank goodness. Officer, this manager is discriminating against my freedom, and this lady thinks she can tell me what I can and can't say. Please arrest them. The next part was pure gold. They had already talked to the high schooler outside the door, I guess, so they knew what was actually going on. They immediately cuffed the Karen who just let out this unbelievable shriek told her she was under arrest and asked her who they could call to pick up the child, who somehow had sat in his chair the whole time, looking like he was used to this. She starts yelling that she isn't going to give out personal information. She knows her rights. Before the cop says anything, the other mom says, Wow, you're dumber than I thought. Karen didn't like that and immediately lunged at her. The cop tried to stop her and kind of succeeded. He didn't let her get a full head of steam. This allowed the other mom to sidestep and give her a little nudge right into the pool. At that point, I think everyone knew it was best to end things. The instructor helped the lady get out of the pool while she was yelling she would sue and all sorts of nonsense. The cop hurriedly got her out of there, and she eventually gave her their husband's number, who picked up the kid. Apparently, the Karen was cuffed when she fell into the shallow end of the pool, so it wasn't great danger, I suppose, but they just got a little worked up, were probably steaming, maybe they needed to cool off a little bit. If you saw a Karen going off like this, would you want to knock them into the pool too? Let me know in the comments down below. Our next story is by Lo Myope. Mother wants a sticker for her naughty child who ransacked office and tried stealing expensive equipment. So I work as a medical professional and specialize in pediatrics. As such, I've made sure that my office is as child friendly as possible. I keep a bag of toys in my room to keep them entertained and distracted and have a variety of stickers to give children as a reward for being brave or just generally pleasant. I like to try and give them a positive experience, as I know that medical consultation rooms can be fantastically intimidating, especially when the professional seeing you is a complete stranger wearing gloves, a mask, etc. Anyhow, I see my fair bit of challenging children, but I don't mind. It is part of the job, and it can sometimes be quite funny. I find that most naughty children are generally okay when you pay attention to them, but the worst offenders are the children of entitled parents. The kind of children who have never once heard the word no from anyone, and who are completely used to getting their own way. So as I come out of my office to introduce myself to the child, approximately 6 years old, and his mother, I can see that the child's been wreaking absolute havoc in the waiting area. 
information brochures and leaflets have been thrown all on the floor. There's a decent sized puddle next to the water cooler. The receptionist was going absolute mad trying to stop the child stealing patient records from behind her desk. Mom was sat there playing on her phone absolutely oblivious. So I call them both into my room and mom walks in, face still glued to her phone, whilst her son races in at 100 miles per hour, nearly wiping out some expensive equipment. After a few minutes of getting the child to calm down somewhat and getting the mother to look up from her phone for a few minutes, I was able to start my observations and do some tests. All of a sudden, the child literally snatches a piece of equipment out of my hand. I say, excuse me, young man, but can I have that back, please? They say, no, it's mine. I say, haha, very funny. I'm afraid that it actually belongs to me. I need it so I can make sure you're healthy. They say, no, it's mine now. I say I'm sorry, but it's a very expensive piece of equipment. Can I have it back? Nope, you can't have it. I say to the mother, excuse me. She doesn't look up from her phone. Excuse me, Mrs. X. No response. Excuse me. Me shouting suddenly got her attention. She says, what do you want? I say, can you ask your son to give me my equipment back? It's very expensive and delicate. She says, why did you give it to him in the first place? I say, I didn't. He ripped it out of my grasp. She says, my son would never do anything like that. I didn't see it happen, so you must be wrong. I gobsmacked say, can you just ask him to give it back? Entitled mother starts huffing and puffing. Sweetie, can you give that equipment back to the doctor? Instead of handing it back, the child throws the item over the room. Luckily, I was close enough to catch it. I say to the child, young man, that behavior is not acceptable and really naughty. Entitled mother says, excuse me, but who do you think you are telling off my child? I say I'm not having anyone intentionally damage the expensive equipment here. She says, you shouldn't tell him off, he was only playing. I say, I'm not going to argue about this, I think it's time for you to leave. She says, what? Why are you kicking out my son? I say, it's very simple, he's caused absolute chaos since walking in the front door and due to your inability to actually supervise him, he snatched a $2,000 instrument from my hand and launched it across the room. She says, it doesn't matter, your practice can just buy another one. I say, it doesn't belong to the practice, it belongs to me personally. She says, I don't see the issue. I say, I'm sure you wouldn't be happy if I billed you for the replacement, or if I rocked up to your house and started throwing $2,000 of your belongings around the house. She says, but that's different. I say, no it isn't. Will you please take your son and leave? Feel free to book in with my colleague, but I won't see your son again. At this point, mom drags her child out to the front desk to book in with my colleague. As I go to write my notes, I realize that a small, but moderately expensive, $400 piece of equipment has disappeared from my desk. It turns out that while I was arguing with the mom, the child had pocketed the equipment whilst I wasn't looking. I stormed out to the front and managed to get the child to hand over this piece of equipment whilst the mother protested that her son wasn't a thief. Once this was all done, I returned to my office only to have the mom walk in, bearing in mind the door was closed a minute later. I say, why are you here? I asked you and your son to leave. She says, I noticed in the waiting area that other children have been given stickers by their doctors. I wanted to know why my son didn't get one. I say, I only give them to children who behave. She says, my son didn't do anything wrong. And I say, you've got to be joking. She says, you're just snooty and don't want kids in your practice. You're being cruel not giving him a sticker. I say, I don't care. Get out of my room now. After a standoff of nearly 30 seconds, mom relented and stormed out of the practice, screaming and shouting to anyone who would listen that she was never going to bring her son back to see me again. I mean, works for me. Working with the public, very little surprises me, but what I just could not fathom is why the mom thought her son's behavior was appropriate. To have such little regard for others' belongings and to have such little interest in actually supervising her son was pretty insane. To top it off, it was the fact that she was demanding some form of reward for his behavior. Glad she's going elsewhere. I guess some of these entitled parents just can have absolute blinders as to what their children are doing. Either that or they are willfully acting ignorant to how awful their child's being. Kind of like just the adult version of that kid. 
Like, I'm pretty sure if this entitled mother loved cookies and you had a jar of them sitting there, you turn around, you notice one's missing, and you go, Entitled mother, did you steal a cookie? They'd say something along the lines of, No, I'm not a thief. Our next story is by Judge Mission. How not to interact with a deaf person. Some of you guys asked me to tell more stories of some of the entitled people I've met at my job, so I thought I would do that. In my previous post, I explained how I work in a small grocery store and that most of the employees can do all of the tasks around the store. Well, that includes being upfront and being a cashier. I was trained on how to be a cashier and work a register, though obviously I don't normally have to because I'm deaf. Though sometimes, when it gets really busy, we have no choice but to stick me on a register. When I do have to work up front, I have my lanyard, a pin, and a sign that I put on the pin pad. All of these things are to inform people that I can't hear. I also have a small notebook that I use in case I need to write anything down. So this one time I'm on the register because it's Thanksgiving week. I remember because it's always crazy busy in our little store. And of course, we didn't have enough lanes open. So I put my sign up and begin to check out customers. Most of the people are fine. I don't speak, there's a few words I can say, but I choose not to speak, especially in public, my voice isn't something everyone gets to hear, and most of the customers realize what's going on pretty early into the order. Some people don't. I always have so many problems with the sign on my pin pad, I had it professionally printed and laminated, and nowhere does it say on it that the pin pad is broken or out of service. In fact, on the bottom it says in bold underlined letters, Please flip to use pin pad screen. I don't know why people have a problem with this concept. They stare at me with a questioning look on their face and all I can think is, read the sign. Any of the three that I have on either my person or on the screen, just read one please. Sometimes I have to physically point to the big bold letters that they somehow missed and flip the sign for them. Why do people have such a problem with simple directions? Another fun thing is people who are still wearing masks. I'm not the best at reading lips, but I certainly have no chance if you have a mask on your face. That's also explained very well on my sign with the sentence, please lower your mask so I can read your lips. People don't seem to get this either. I'll just see the fabric of their mask start to move and I get really annoyed. When people get annoyed or upset with me when I ask them to remove their mask or straight up refuse, I don't know what to do at that point. I can't understand you, you won't work with me or write down what you need, how am I supposed to help you? Speaking of writing, I remember one specific old man who came in and went through my line. He was confused by the sign because he must be illiterate, but once he figured it out, he wrote down, your sign is an inconvenience. I had to step off the register after that. That really hurt and I felt like all I was doing was bothering everyone and making everything difficult for people. I cried for like 5 minutes in the bathroom. The really nice manager from my previous story made me feel better though when she started signing words of encouragement. People are jerks, especially when it's like some menial thing. So what if you go through the checkout? The checkout takes like a minute tops. If somebody's deaf and you gotta lower your mask to say one or two words, or you gotta read to flip the sign, so be it. I don't see why you gotta give somebody a hard time because they have a disability. And our final story of the day is by Sam Klops. Karen at a comic book store of all places. So this literally happened a few days ago. Backstory, I've been an avid comic book collector since I was a kid. I'm in my mid-30s now. And since COVID restrictions have eased up in my city, my local book slash hobby shop decided to celebrate by having a rep from CGC come in, doing appraisals, and if you want it, get sent away and have it doing appraisals, and if you want it, have a comic sent away to get it thoroughly looked over getting your book sealed, graded, which greatly enhances a comic's value. I decided to bring in my Fantastic Four number 49, first appearance of Galactus for you comic nerds like me, signed by Stan Lee. Rest in peace, Stan. Enter Entitled Mother and Entitled Kid behind me in line. The kid must have been like 16 or 17. I get a tap on the shoulder. The kid says, hey, I see you have a signed book. Do you want to trade for it? I say, no thanks, this is like my second most prized book and it's signed by the late Mr. Lee. Entitled Mother says, but my son has like a hundred books he can trade you for and I'll even throw in a hundred bucks. The Entitled Kid says, I really want that issue, that cover is legendary. I say, sorry kiddo, you're gonna have to spend some time at cons or auctions to get your hands on this issue and it won't be cheap. Entitled Mother says, he needs that comic. At this point, the store owner stepped in and said, No solicitation or private transactions in my store. I have a business to run. 
they left in a huff, giving me hard side eye on the way. My book was appraised at 6.5 out of 10, putting it with the signature at just about under 6,000 in value. I'm still waiting for the confirmation from CGC for the final number. Well, uh, for 6,000, uh, if OP wants to trade me for a thousand comic books and a hundred bucks, I'm willing to make that deal too. Just saying, OP. I don't even have comic books. I'd go buy a hundred just to trade for that. And also, yes, rest in peace, Stan Lee. I don't think there's a single soul out there that doesn't like Stan Lee. Excelsior! But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So of all these stories I've read today, which is your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.